Hello friends, this is Budrich. It's a new video. I prepared a lol bun here. I call it Sublime Text Package Puppies Package. Package Puppies Package. Paka Papas Pack Sick. Paka Papas Pack Sick. Yeah, we're gonna talk about Sublime Text Packages uh, and uh, continue where we left off in the last video. Let's see what happens if I open Sublime here. Yeah, we get this. Uh, this is exactly where we left off in the last video. Uh, maybe I should also mention really quickly here that uh, uh, this weir weird color scheme I have here. I, I just copied it from a post on uh, one of those uh, infamous um, Rice communities uh, image board things, you know. A guy had posted a, a post with this color scheme, which he... Well, let me bring up the file so we can give the credits uh, correctly. You should do that, you know, in our community. Have it here. And it's called Plan 9. Uh, I have based it on this guy, is the one who made the post, I think. John Luis del Rosario, also known as John2x on GitHub. Uh, he have in turn based it on the Sandburn Emacs theme. Yeah, it's an Emacs theme from the start. That's why there's a lot of weird uh, Lisp comments here. But whatever, I just um, converted it into a Mondo theme and this is how it turned out. So now we have given credit to everyone except that lame image board where I found it. Um, kind of lost track there. Uh, 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 uh. We wanted to fix this annoying uh, setting thing with a new window uh, and the fact that uh, it overwrites any comments and uh, blank lines and stuff in our user setting file and the fact that we cannot edit this default setting file, meaning we cannot um, blank uh, or disable key bindings in particular because there are so many of them you have to copy them I showed you all this in the last video so in this video we will try to fix this um, yeah let's do this we have a problem here now we uh, want to be able to edit the default setting files and also never have to deal with this extra window split view thing so where is this uh, uh, default uh, setting files <clears throat> if we look here in the sublime text directory uh, we have um, a directory called packages open that only thing we can see here is a directory called user and this is where the user setting files are this and uh, this is the preferences one the default setting files they are not located anywhere where here uh, they are not located anywhere here or here or here we have to go back way back in the file system find this directory called opt I think it stands for optional uh, applications kind of you see I have a lot of this uh, dark side uh, applications here .NET Microsoft MS SQL Microsoft SQL <laughs> server sublime text it's only proprietary dark side visual studio code vivaldi but here we can also we can find the sublime text directory here and i think it will install uh, sublime Th this is where the binary the real uh, binary lives and, and the core core functions of, of of the application is stored and i think it's uh, the same on on almost every distribution it will install it to this opt directory here um, we have a directory called packages yet again and this is um, 
this is uh, the core packages, so to speak, that you get uh, when you install Sublime. We haven't, I haven't talked a bit anything about packages, but it will become clear hopefully during this video a little bit clear because this you have you have to stay with me now it's very very confusing i have even made a, a super strange html file uh, and yeah we get to that but this in the opt uh, directory sublime text packages we have a bunch of of these files and as you can see on the icon uh, it's zip files but they are of sublime have of course their uh, uh, great uh, extensions so these files are called sublime dash package but they are actually just zip files and most of these are just the uh, syntax uh, language definitions for for uh, many languages uh, that are pre-installed with sublime but there are some special packages here for example you have color schemes here which contain color scheme uh, things and we have this default sublime package. This is inside this file is where um, the default setting files are, but there are a lot of, of cool, cool things inside this package. Um, and then it is, as I said, mostly uh, language files here. There is also theme. This contains the UI uh, theme files. And this is a special package, vintage package. We will get to that. But other than that, I think all of these are language packages. So um, to access this read-only uh, setting file, we need to extract this default file. And you could just use your um, a, a normal zip program. I don't think I have any GUI things installed here, so it will not work. I unzip them from the terminal with unzip but uh, even better way and now we're, since we are deal dealing with packages here now could actually open up uh, Vivaldi <clears throat> look at this beautiful start page I found it looks like a bio so I'm gonna tweak this and add my bookmarks now it just stopped from from where i found it on github i'm sorry i don't have the uh, credi uh, credits for this right from the top of my head or easy accessible but search for start pages and then you might find it whatever uh, uh, um. then we open sublime package control and we search for extract sublime package and it opens up this uh, website here packagecontrol.io and this is like the package manager for sublime i had a shortcut a search shortcut uh, with my chromium vim plugin whatever that will be another video don't uh, care about that just go to packagecontrol.io and search for for packages here uh, and extract sublime package this is uh, this is uh, highly recommended that, that you get this uh, but first and foremost to install packages uh, from package control here which i think now is official uh package manager before it was like a third party thing and maybe for some of you you, you have to install package control uh, uh, by following these instructions Th this probably still works you copy this into sublime's uh, console which is uh, some kind of terminal that you can find by hitting control and the grave uh, key next to one <coughs> You know the key you do a tilde with, or backticks, control and backtick, yeah. But it's called grave actually, that character. Uh, control grave brings up this terminal and there you can paste this code and that will install package control. But um, quite recently they added this install package control to this tools menu. So you can just click here, it will take a second or maybe two. And then you get a pop-up here saying that package control was successfully installed. Use the command palette and type install package to get started. So let's get started by uh, opening the command palette. Control shift P. Uh, install 
package uh, you select this and here it will take a couple of seconds because it have to index now the this is the first time it usually takes a little bit longer but this is a list of all available uh, third-party packages that you can install in sublime uh, and it's the same um, as you can find on, on, on this page for example if I, there are probably thousands I, I would guess two 2000 packages at least I'm not 100% sure exactly how many there are but at least a thousand packages most of them are just color themes uh, but we wanted to install that extract uh, sublime package package um, you hear now I'm saying I, I have probably already said package 20 times so search for extract sublime package and you just select it hit enter and here we can see since we have this preferences file open it will uh, show us some information and add yet some more uh, stuff to this setting file and this is uh, you you do this not every day but sometimes you install packages and every time you do it will update the setting file removing comments and stuff but uh, now uh, this extract package package is installed uh, and we can find that, uh, remember this directory, or we could open a new directory and keep that one. Then we open sublime text 3. Now we have inside this directory, which was empty before, we have a couple of files here. And these are also the uh, same format as the core packages, zip files named sublime-package, just like this. But now I am in the home folder config directory thing here and we can see package control which is the package manager is a package in itself uh, and here we can see the extract sublime package but we don't get any more information than this uh, and this is one of the weird things you know sometimes you get a little a message when you install a package sometimes you get more or less nothing you can always look here in package settings uh, all we have is the settings for package control and he he here you can also see let's see how this looks now Yeah, this just opens it up in in a new tab here. That's good But sometimes the these package menus also opens those extra windows and stuff very unpredictable But this extract pa sublime package we don't get any information if we install it uh, from from package control within sublime so I really recommend every time you want to install packages and stuff, go to this uh, website and search for, for, for the package uh, here. I don't know why it doesn't show up. There it is. And then you can read. Uh, this is the same readme as you can find on, on GitHub. Sometimes they are, uh, they are located on, on Bitbucket. I don't actually think that GitLabs is supported here yet. Maybe it is whatever but here you can see this readme file and it can even i i usually do this also i, I follow this link to the github repository so you so you can see um yeah if it, if it's a serious package so to speak or whatever this is actually uh and, and don't get fooled by this uh it says here the user is sublime text but I don't think this is official. Uh, this is packages maintained by the community and some of these are like really old and unmaintained. So not 100% sure if this is uh, uh, official sublime text uh, thing, but, but there are usually no problem with the packages from, from this uh, author. Um, but here you can read the instructions. <clears throat> let's do this Let, uh, whatever I will show you how this works instead um, what we do th this directory here this is from the mondo I just wanted to show you know you know the the theme file here and stuff let's remove this and, and this is important when you right click stuff here in in the sidebar you can do things like uh, create a new file rename stuff and, and things like that if you delete a file or a folder in the sidebar here it will get deleted from uh, from the disk if you just want to remove it from the project which I want to do now you select this but be aware but you will get a warning when when you delete from here I never do that uh, it's uh, uh, whatever 
and then we add this installed packages directory here we will we also add the packages directory so now we have a project here with uh, these two directories here we can see the setting files we can also see some weird uh, setting files here uh, that are yeah i don't know what this is <laughs> certificate for for package control but we have the key map file and the setting file and we also have this is the package control settings files and as you can see here all setting files uh, both like the default key map or the user key map settings and the user preferences but also almost every package have have their own settings here, which are usually named after the package like package control dot sublime settings and only the package itself knows about this file but all of them are located in this user directory inside packages and this is they if if i would have named this i would have named this directory settings and i wouldn't have placed it within this package directory you will see this will get very confusing soon if it already if, if you think it is confusing now just wait uh, and these are the install packages and when you install this extract sublime package then you can right click uh, yeah that, that's one way to do it you can right click and uh, um, packed package which which is an archived package you know a zip file here if you right click them here then you get this menu item you didn't have this before before we installed it and I select extract package and immediately it extracted the package to the packages directory here and this is the content uh, of that uh, uh, zip file here we can see it here also so th this is what's inside those uh, package files they can look completely different from from different packages <clears throat> but here we can see for example a readme file this is the same that we could see on github but this is a way so you never have to leave your browser then you can just extract them from here uh, and we can find uh, this command it can be very interesting um, we'll get to this later but whatever now we have a way to extract packages i will come back to and explain more about this how this works because now we have both an extracted and a packed uh, version of the same package and I will talk a bit about how this works uh, and this is important if you're going to use sublime there are two ways you can go either you don't install any packages at all you just use the default way of handling stuff with the preferences and things like this and don't care about this or you, you kind of uh, need to understand how these packages works uh, otherwise it, it, it will get really really um, clunky uh, or how to say it to, to manage uh, key bindings and stuff like that we will now also add this now I am in the opt directory here uh, with the packages directory here and you can see everything is named the same thing in sublime world they 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 invent the weirdest names and then they just name everything with that strange stupid name so if we add this also and and, and this is the power of projects I'm, I'm now mixing a lot of concepts here with projects and packages and stuff but we just have to start and and you will see during this series um vid little sublime video series you will everything will become clear but I, there's no easy way to start here and now we have two directories called packages and one contains uh, packed uh, <laughs> core packages the other directory that's called packages contains extracted installed packages and the user settings <laughs> and then we have a directory called installed packages it's like I don't know what they were drinking or smoking when they were uh, naming things here but whatever this is how it is maybe we should just rename this uh, because this is very very cool thing with sublime and and projects now we have our little setting packages project going on here we can save this project 
um, just go here and do save project as and we get this <laughs> wow this looks i haven't seen uh, so many gui applications with a new color scheme it looks cool it looks cool um and then uh, it prompts me here to to save this project somewhere let's save it on the desktop uh, name it uh, sublime uh, yeah sublime dot sublime slash project a uh, dash project we save it there you can save these uh, files anywhere save and then we can also go into edit project all, all of these uh, items are also available from the command palette of course and now we selected project edit project and that will edit the currently open project we can also see in the title bar here that uh, we have sublime in parentheses here and this is the name of the currently uh, active project if we would change project this would change and th this can be important to know for later and this um, Let's also do, whoops, uh, god damn it, this, oh, clear that guy, just want some more screen estate here, um, this uh, file defines this project, currently we only have these settings, the, the, the folders, uh, which are three folders here and the path to them uh, tilde expansion is allowed and uh, I recommend that so uh, you can do this and it will have the same same effect and then you can add a name key to these uh, uh, JSON things here so let's call this packages opt and it's important with the commas there now it's called packages opt but it's still it doesn't rename the directory on disk it just renames it here in the sidebar basically uh, and let's rename all of all of them here while we are doing this um, you can add the, we will come back to this um, uh, project stuff uh, in probably a later video and this is um, extracted packages so this will be at least a little bit easier to, to understand what's going on name in one way it's stupid of me to do this because it might be confusing then you don't know which uh, folder it is on, on, on the file system but whatever we, I, I will try to, to be as clear as possible when talking about this stuff and this can be called packed there now we have three directories here called packed which contains these installed packages uh, and then we have the extracted ones and then we have this and the cool thing here now is that we can extract packages from this op directory as well so if we extract now the default uh, package here extract and here you can also see you know as soon as you select a file here look at the tab here it doesn't open a new file it, it it there is like a preview tab so so um and i can also well no i can't but it previews the files and these are zip files you know but in in binary format here <laughs> and sublime opens these files as it's nothing you know it's several thousand lines and it takes no time at all to open these files and th this is an indicator on how fast it is uh, opening files and handling large files but we extracted the default package there and now we can see that we also have that here in this uh, default packages uh, directory here and it contains all of these files so it's a lot of files here and that is because and this is uh, a very good place to to learn how sublime works and and if you want to create your own um, functionality and packages take a look at the python files here and stuff you, you will learn a lot but here we can see uh, for example we have the default linux sublime key map and this is the default 
keymap file. If I would, uh, let's just add a comment here, a comment, save this, and now if I open preferences, uh, settings, no, it didn't, no, it's the keymap we, we were supposed to. Preferences, uh, key bindings. And now we can see our comment here because now it reads, uh, doesn't read the, the defaults from, from the uh, packed opt package here. It reads it from the extracted uh, place here. And now this isn't read only anymore. So now we can actually uh, disable uh, key bindings in, in, in this view if we wanted to. So we we have already solved one issue, making this uh, um, file not read only anymore. And I guess this is a good time to talk about how this uh, works a bit. Should I show you that incredible HTML file that I uh, did before? I think I will. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Have it git, and then we have uh, lab, and we have bud lime, and we have YouTube, and we have package puppies, package directory, or whatever. Here I have created a very advanced HTML file. Let's open it in Vivaldi as well. So that works. Maybe you cannot drag and drop them like that. There, look at this, look at this, it's amazing. <laughs> this is so stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to show you uh, the hierarchy here of packages by using HTML and CSS to explain that. And if you don't know HTML and CSS, this, I don't know, just skip this part. Maybe this is stupid, but this is how it looks like. Just uh, pretend that you understand if you don't. We have a, a top div here, like uh, that I call application. This is like, this is the binary uh, application, the closed source part of Sublime. Uh, then we have the core packages, uh, and then we have the installed packages. Then we have the extracted packages. Then we have the user settings. Then we have the syntax settings. Then we have the project settings, and then we have the Thing that we actually see this this is the document I, I'm trying to represent the, the hierarchy here so if we look at this picture again and this is also wrong in a way um, here if I remove document here now and then update this there we can see and, and also I use background color here uh, as the ex example the document, uh, this is the documentorio, <laughs> I don't know why I wrote that before, but whatever. Uh, it uh, inherits the, the uh, background color from the project settings. And, and think, think of it like this, the document is the only thing we see. So even if there is another background color in the syntax settings, we will just see the last... Uh, the project settings background color because that will overwrite the syntax settings and the syntax settings will overwrite the user settings so so for example if i would remove here project also now uh, project will inherit from syntax and uh, document will inherit from project so now all of these and and, and you get it right uh, if i would remove syntax then it that would inherit from user. I know this is super confusing, but um, I think it's a good good way to see this visually like this, but I will not do this anymore. You, you get the message, you, you know, if I would do it again, then everything would be get, get blue and so on. Uh, sublime text, we cannot change the core uh, package uh, or, or a core application. It's closed source, so you cannot change that. But the core packages, as we just did, we extracted them. But if we don't extract the core packages, it will read the settings from... And, and this, this represents the packed uh, uh, packages in the opt uh, directory here. 
this is uh, this pink part here. So let's take, for example, uh, the key map, because the key map is a good example. Mm. The key map lives inside the default uh, package here, packed package in the opt uh, directory here. Inside this uh, zip file is uh, the key map, which is called, and here this is, and then there are like these these kind of things where, where it's uh, a hierarchy wi within the files themselves. Because you can see there are default Linux sublime key map, then we have default OS X Sublime key map and we have default Windows Sublime key map. So the and that is because uh, you know the keys can be named differently on on uh, different operating system. I, I I don't know especially OS X have, uh, they have a weird weird uh, keyboard layout. Whatever. Uh, I think they call it command instead of control or, or whatever. Who cares? Um and this means that that your OS uh, that you're using will have a priority over the other files. <clears throat> and here's another brilliant naming convention from Sublime. You know, uh, it's actually a space in the file name here, and parentheses. You know, space, special characters, very long extensions. But it doesn't end here. And they also default sublime key map. Yeah, well, it's logical. It's the default key map, right? In the default package. And imagine we are looking at the zip file now. But if we would extract that package, uh, or actually the next step is uh, it will look in, in the installed packages directory here. Uh, and that is these, you know, now, now we only have these uh, uh, installed packages. They they are next in line. So if Sublime finds a file that is called default Sublime default space parenthesis Linux dot Sublime key map, that file uh, JSON uh, will, will get merged into whatever Sublime read from default here. Then it goes to uh, extracted, and now things are getting very, very, very strange. Uh, we are core packages, installed packages, extracted pack packages, and that are these uh, uh, directories here. And now, since we have a directory that's called default here, which is the extracted version of the default Sublime package, then uh, normally, it will merge any found files uh, with the name uh, default uh, Linux Sublime key map. But when it finds a directory with the same name without the extension as a previously packed uh, uh, um, package, then it will replace uh, any file it finds in here with the one that it read <laughs> in the packed version. I know this is so weird, but I'm trying to, to take it slow here. And when you get this, then it will be very easy to use Sublime. When you don't get this, Sublime will piss you off. Um, and then it reads this file and that will overwrite the packed version. But does it end there? No, then it reads the user settings. Because remember, we had that uh, in, uh, the settings are located here in the extracted. There is no uh, default package called user here. So it will read this special folder. And then it will see here, oh, here we also have default Linux Sublime key map. But that will not overwrite uh, the, this one that it finds here. It will just uh, um, merge any settings, meaning that uh, this key, the control Q, will overwrite the control Q it found here, but will, it will not overwrite the whole file, which would be uh, which this file does with the, the packed version. <coughs> oh man, this is <laughs> this is so weird. Okay, but we are only here, you know. Then we have syntax settings and project settings. 
And uh, I think uh, key maps, they end here at user settings. You cannot set the uh, syntax and project specific uh, key bindings. But many settings, you can make them syntax and project specific. For example, the font size. We could have a, a, a different font size for JavaScript and one font size for Bash and one font size for another language. And then you can have different font sizes for different projects. We have barely talked about projects, but you can. So these, these two uh, are, are yet another layers. And this might sound just crazy if, if you have no experience at all with text editors and stuff. But this is actually... The names are stupid, but the system is incredibly powerful and good, and it works very, very well in Sublime. It's extremely fast uh, merging these settings and stuff, and you can really fine uh, tune. And I, I actually use all of this. I have different uh, uh, settings for different syntaxes and different projects and and overwrite things like this. It's very, very powerful and very useful. And I think Emacs, uh, in one way, you can think of it like Emacs, uh, if you know Emacs, it have different modes that you can activate and you can have um, like many different modes at the same time under different circumstances. It's, it's kind of similar to that. And now also remember this, we only talk about settings now, the, these sublime setting files. Uh, which are just JSON files that get merged. But this, the same principles are true for because a package can contain a lot of different files here, and especially Python. Python is the language that you write uh, plugins for when you need to program something. You, you write it in Python. And all Python files in the root directory of a package. This is the root directory of the default package here. So all these Python files will kind of out, get auto-read by, by Sublime and all functionality inside of them will be available to Sublime. And it works very well and it seldom slows uh, Sublime down. There are some packages that, that do and I, I will talk a bit about the, like the, the bloated or bloating packages, but some of them are actually very useful. But and also since you can fine grain, um, fine tune the settings like this, you can also enable and disable packages for different parts here in this. Uh, uh, I don't know what what to call it, but in this cascading setting system. So I could uh, disable all packages except for uh, HTML in a HTML project, and that would make make it much faster. I don't need to enable like Python linters and stuff when, when I know I, I, I will not work on Python's files in that uh, project, for example. Uh, and that is how it works. Okay. Um, we are almost done here with our little goal. Uh, and this is a good start. Now we have all package locations here. And I'm thinking that we could yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the important thing here, you you remember it overwrites the the. Let's close uh, a bunch of tabs here because it's getting so many. Uh, you remember it overwrote the um, user setting files here, and also this user directory inside the package extracted packages uh, directory here. Uh, here it is, uh, packages, then you have user, and this should, in my opinion, be named settings and live uh, outside of the packages directory, but it doesn't, but, uh, but in one way it's logical also here, uh, whatever. But it's a very special directory and all, almost all packages uh, adds their own setting files to this directory. You cannot really control it uh, and customize a different path and stuff. You, you could probably do it by tweaking uh, these Python files and stuff here because many of these they handle... I think there is even a, a file here called... Yeah, here it is. Settings.py and this is the script that uh, uh, opens this new window and stuff. I have never hacked this at all because I, I, I just dislike using this menu altogether. 
But you, as, as you can see, a lot of the functionality is actually open source in Sublime and you can uh, tweak a lot of this kind of core functionality. But in one way, this is just bling bling functionality. The core functionality, which is what makes Sublime so incredibly good, you can basically not touch, but you can modify a lot. But this is a special directory and I would like to add that as a like a user settings uh, thing here in, in the project. And then we can go back here and, and create like a pseudo uh, directory here. Uh, let's just copy one of these. Uh, and uh, it's located in packages user. slash user and then we can save and now oh it have the same name let's name it uh, mm, settings packages there now we have this directory here which is actually this directory which we also have you I don't know, the, this can also be hard to, to grasp why this is so good, but you can see we have, have this directory in two places here, the same files, uh, but without messing around with creating uh, a bunch of uh, sim links and stuff on the file system, we just have them here um, yeah, in this uh, abstract way, but it's actually very powerful. But it can be annoying to have them duplicated like this, and then you can uh, we can actually do this right away. Uh, let's see if I remember this now. Exclude folder pattern, maybe. Mm. Maybe. I don't know, extracted, no, that wasn't the name, but we can see this here now, uh, just a second. Uh, if we go to the default, we go to the preferences file here, which is the default preferences, uh, preferences, and as you can see, these also have Linux OS X, and then it's this general file, which uh, uh, is valid for all operating system. And I think Linux, it only have some font size things that overrides the default settings here, but wh whatever. And I know there, folder exclude patterns. Wasn't that what I wrote? Uh, project, ah, there. And now if we look here, we see that the user directory isn't visible here and it's, it's actually removed from the project. And the project is a lot more than just this visual representation in the sidebar. Uh, one of the most obvious and, and best features with projects is that you can search uh, by just hitting control P by default. Oops, wrong key. And this brings up a list of all files in uh, the project. It mixes them all together and this is a very fast way to, to find uh, the files you are looking for. But here we can also see another problem. Uh, it also shows us these uh, binary files here. For example, the, uh, this is a default Sublime package uh, file. You, will, you never want to open that, you know. It, it's only good to have it to be able to extract it. And, and, and it's also sometimes these files are just good to know uh, what their names are. Sometimes you are uh, maybe creating a, a web a web page and you have an image folder and you need to know uh, the name of the image and stuff. Then you can, can have images uh, here in Sublime. Even if you never edit the files, it's just good to know where they're located and what their names are. But you never want to accidentally open them like this. Then there is uh, another good setting here. And th this too, uh, is something I discovered quite late. But in this setting file, it actually describes here exactly uh, what we want here. These files will show up in the sidebar, but not uh, be included uh, in go to anything or find in files, which was what we were doing there. You had uh, one of these binary files pattern and you 
we could actually add this uh, extension here sublime uh, dash packages here and then it would be a global setting but you can also add them uh, as a per folder setting you cannot add it as a per project setting but uh, for each uh, directory here you could uh, make yeah tell it to that some files are binary but let's uh, do it globally here because i think we want that so star dot sublime uh, package save and now if i hit control p uh, if i search for default you see we have no no more of those binary files included okay last thing and then we have uh, solved all the issues that uh, i mentioned in the last video or the solvable issues as well at least uh, and now we we only have this thing you know uh, that it will overwrite uh, and remove any comments and sort the lines here I, we really don't want that or at least i don't want that i don't think any human being want that but uh, sublime thing it's really handy when they but I think this is also, even if it's very inconvenient for us humans, it's very, very uh, convenient for uh, the computer with sorted settings. That's why it's so fast uh, uh, in reloading the settings and stuff. I think it has something to do with that. Um, but and now we will see. Let, let's go back to this beautiful uh, uh, thing we have here. Because I, I, I kind of uh, skipped one part with extracted packages here, which is, uh, you know, here where we extracted, we have extracted two packages and we also have the user uh, directory here. This is the extracted packages directory. When it reads settings from here, um, uh, and this is a bit of a lie, it says here that the next step is user settings. But this is not 100% true because it actually just reads uh, the setting files from each extracted package here in alphabetical order. And usually, this is so weird that they have done it like this, uh, usually user is uh, <laughs> the last package in that list. And I, I think it's even recommended from Sublime that you shouldn't create uh, packages with names that are uh, higher, like starting with... Uh, X or a Z or something because it's desirable to, to always have this user uh, packages read last so so those files will always have uh, highest priority but we can actually create just create a, a directory here and we uh, I like to call it sublime with a Z or Z depending on your accent and location and stuff like that and then we can just um, let's just do this let's copy and i actually like to copy both preferences here and the key map to this uh, new directory here sublime and actually uh, and what will happen now is that it will it, it, it doesn't matter here now that we have the same settings with the same name. It does. Uh, the Sublime doesn't care. Uh, in one way, it really it it think it have the best naming system in the world and it loves it. But it doesn't care that there are many duplicate files. Then it just knows that these files should e either overwrite each other or get merged. Um, and these will just get merged with the the user setting files there but these will have the highest priority and this means that we could add here settings in this uh, sublime directory here that we never want to because this file will never get auto updated by sublime it doesn't un it doesn't know about this file in a way from from anywhere internal in 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 in, in sublime Whenever it wants to auto update your settings, it always looks in the user uh, settings directory here and updates that file. And that is what causing the, the comments to disappear. But if we add comments to this uh, preferences file in this sublime uh, directory here, then those comments and the formatting we do to this file will always 
stay and I like to remove like for example color scheme here that is one setting that I want to remove and actually you should keep keep an eye and remove all, all settings here that uh, sublime likes to set by itself and, and this is another one ignored packages so I will remove that and I will remove this now from here and that will get read from from user instead save here now we can actually add some comments here just to show you save it and let's also add this sublime as a special directory in our project here and you will see how nice and tidy this is you could even say that it's neat neato neato neat neat neato what happened to that guy and this sublime here it's located in this path packages slash sublime so here and then we can name this settings user save and now you see we have it here but we still have it uh, here and just as with the exclude pattern we could just add this to this list here sublime there and now we can just edit the, the, the config files from here instead. And we could actually, I like, or I don't know. Maybe you want to, maybe you don't want to add all of the key bindings here, for example. Default Sublime Linux here. You could actually just, we could cut all of these, remove them from, from the default and add them to the user settings instead save and we also save this it doesn't matter now now this is blank but this file since it uh, I will repeat this now again since this file uh, exists inside a directory with the same name as an packed package doesn't matter if that package is located in the opt directory or in this installed packages directory. If it have the same name without the extension as a packed package, any file will overwrite files inside the packed package. But the packed package is kind of the blueprint of the package. So if any files are missing from this extracted version, then it will just read it from the packed uh, uh, file uh, yeah packed version instead and this means uh, since we have a lot of files here now it, it, it's too much files in my opinion you know add line before i don't know some weird macro a, a lot of this just delete to end of line this, this is just like core functionality you will, you will never have to edit or, or even read this most of these files but they can actually be interesting just just to get to know sublime how, how it works uh, but um, it's a very good idea to always keep your your uh, projects tidy so you can actually just delete all files here that uh, you think that you will not need so let's uh, start from the top Sublime Linux, we will need that even if it's blank and this is important even especially when it's blank now if, if I would delete this then it would read the default settings from from the packed version, you know uh, Sublime commands it can be interesting and the uh, mouse map could be interesting OS X Windows. We don't care about that stuff uh, Then we also have this Preferences sublime settings and preferences Linux sublime settings and I think that's enough there are some other files here that can or cannot be interesting but it doesn't matter you just extract it again if you if you need to we delete these files now and now you see the default package is clean but it doesn't break the package in any way now it would just read the files from the packed version and two benefits of this is that one uh, it doesn't clutter up your your project and it's 
faster now to search when you don't get as many uh, alternatives. Uh, and it's also safer so you don't by mistake open one of these uh, package uh, Python files or whatever and start editing them. And now you can see these are also have a circle here, meaning they are not saved because now these files doesn't exist on, on the disk anymore. The, I, I just opened some random um, Python file from the default package. If I would save this, it would save it to, to the same location, I think. But let's just close them without saving. And now it is we are done we are done and this is this is like the beginning of how how I uh, want it and now with this you never have to go into these settings again you just open this project and last thing here I, I want to show you what what this project really uh, the power of the projects it auto saves all the time and it saves the the open tabs and even which directories you have uh, um, uh, unfolded like this if I would go here and do a close project that will just clean now we have no open files no open project or anything at all uh, then I could for example just add this i3 directory here which is my i3 config files uh, we can go here and save this uh, project because this is like a new project now it, it even says here that it is i3 it's ba it based that on, on because that's the only directory in, in this project then it will name the project like this and it is actually a project even if you haven't saved it but if you save it we can name this one i3 uh, and just save it here at the desktop we should have our other uh, project file here sublime.sublime project and then we also have this workspace Bo both of these are, are workspace is like a companion file for the project the project file was the file we were editing before where we defined the, the, the directories and, and what files to include and exclude and stuff workspace contains information about which files are open and stuff like that and that can be important to know because that can actually contain sensitive data since it contains all the open file names and stuff like that you never know it could it could contain sensitive data so be sure to to never uh, upload this file to github and every project will have its own uh, workspace file whatever uh, save this i3 sublime project here now now we have it saved and now you can actually and then we can open some files here just to show you we have this uh, active whatever now you can select here quick switch project control alt p that will give us for some reason this is a different ui element that isn't used in any other part but whatever we we will fix this also in a later video but now i can just select here sublime project and that switches to the sublime project with our settings and this is uh, kind of how I have it set up. So I have like, for example, an, an I, I3 project uh, fixing with my I3 scripts and stuff here. And then ah, I need to change something in Sublime instead of going to the preferences or anywhere. I just change to the Sublime project and, and there I have all uh, the Sublime related settings. And I also like to save some documentation and things like that. We, we will get to that in, in a later video. I say thank you for watching, um, I know this was a strange video but this system is so strange so it takes a strange guy with a straight, strange HTML file with some dirty CSS to explain this to people and I don't know, I haven't seen this anywhere, uh, the only place that, that discuss this uh, a bit is, um, yeah let's go to uh, my github here. Um, I think I have some links in, in this. It's highly recommended. I will add this Budlime uh, repository link in, in the show notes. Uh, 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 uh. If you go to Awesome, here I have a list of, of uh, yeah good articles and, and screencasts and stuff. And I'm right now I'm I'm working on this quite a lot and, and we'll update this with a lot more links soon. But here you can find package control documentation highly recommended and the unofficial documentation highly recommended uh, 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 here we have the package control documentation let's see if I can find this now customizing packages yeah this this article here 
it's it's quite short but this describes uh, uh, quite well how this uh, packed and unpacked packages works i highly recommend you read this and also the uh, the unofficial sublime documentation here also have have uh, some some good uh, writings about it but it's it's not super obvious this stuff especially when you're new to sublime and no videos i have seen have talked about this they uh, instead they say how good it is with this split that you have the default settings file so conveniently just copy them over not my style this is uh, this is uh, uh, only way to 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 stay sane with sublime or you will go insane like me if you try to figure this out uh, how this works and so many times i have almost screamed out loud what is going on here with all these files and and we have just started we have just installed one package here now uh, I have a lot of packages that I like to install. Here, here, here's just a little list of, of my recommended packages. We will see, not all of them will have their own video. I can uh, uh, make some bundle videos, whatever. We'll, we'll see, but I have a lot more to talk about, about Sublime. We look at what we have done now. We have only <laughs> added so something so we can easily change the key bindings and the preferences we haven't looked anything at the preferences or the key bindings or anything themselves just <laughs> this but trust me this will save you so much time and i really hope you get this about projects here and i i create projects for everything i have like uh, i3 project i have a dance project i have a rofi project and and then you can have really really good small projects easy to search within them with the control p and they create rules and save some documentation that you don't necessarily have to have in the same directory as your git and stuff like that it's projects is what it's all about that that's one of the biggest advantages with sublime that it have such a good project uh, abilities built in and it will get even better if you can't uh, because i don't know when i will release the next video but if you really really want to uh, get your hands dirty and start using and, and trying these things out get this package project manager it's it's excellent it's very very good and I, that i think that will be the next video looking a bit at the project manager uh, package it's it's very easy you can also see it here on this uh, laracast uh, which is actually very good laravel is like a php framework and they have this uh, official uh, video thing most of these videos cost money i think you pay a subscription like monthly or something but for some reason, uh, probably they have made a deal with Sublime. This, vid this whole series is free and it's about uh, Sublime. Uh, some of it is uh, PHP spe specific, but a lot of it is also... Here we have Seamless Project Manager Management. In this video, they will show you how this Project Manager plugin works and a bit more about uh, uh, projects. And they are also professional not uh, some random uh, idiot on YouTube who makes uh, one hour videos about projects. They make a video about project that takes four minutes and 15 seconds. So highly recommend this. Uh, this is high quality tutorial, not, uh, not random, random stuff. Don't want to talk down on anyone, but the thing is there is not that many uh, tutorials or stuff on YouTube about Sublime. The best resources is more or less this and uh, the unofficial documentation here then there is also some uh, some book i think wes boss boss has written a good book i think i have read it sometimes but more or less everything you need is in this unofficial and the official documentation thank you for watching have a great day everybody bye 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 bye